Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another t video on bonding today, so let's get moving. Bam! Today we're going to determine the molecular geometry of number eight. And what is number eight? We're going to determine the molecular geometry or shape of a sulfur tetrafluoride. So sulfur and then tetra is for four and then fluorines. So sulfur tetrafluoride, there's the formula. That's two non-metals. It has prefix naming. You should be familiar with that. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to draw the Lewis dot structure. And I'm going to refresh your memory. And we have already previous drawn the Lewis dot structure for this. So please look at a previous video. That is drawing Lewis dot structures number eight for sulfur tetrafluoride. There's the Lewis dot structure in the lower left-hand corner there to refresh your memory. And we are following the rules of the X. That is the central element A is going to be the sulfur. Okay, and then the X is how many bonding regions around the sulfur? I see one, two, three, and four fluorines around that central region there. So that would be AX4. And then there's a lone pair of electrons directly on that sulfur. So that would be an E. So it's going to be AX4E. You should see that AX4, so the 4 plus the 1 E is 5 domains. So it's it's generically a trigonal bipyramidal structure um, as far as domains. However, we're going to rip off one of those domains and put a pair of non-bonding electrons on it. And that tells us what that shape is. So you should associate AX4E with a name of a geometric shape, or you should understand that there are four bonding domains and one non-bonding domain in this. Okay, and then from that, you're going to get the name of this here, and that is a disphenoidal or seesaw, and that looks like this right here. Okay, I'm holding on to the lone pair of electrons, and this is one of the really interesting things about this molecule here, is that you need to understand the uh, geometry and the bond angles, which will be in a future video here if you're following this in order. But just to make certain, this bond angle at the pole to the equator here is 90 degrees. And then since basically this three structure, so one, two, three, is a trigonal planar structure, that means that these are 120 degrees. Now, lone pairs that I'm holding on to right here require more space. So what has more space, uh, 120 or 90? Okay, and if we go back to the uh, trigonal bipyramidal structure, you should see that this was the original structure here, which is uh, 90 degrees and then 120, 120, 120. And what has happened is you've removed one of these and placed that with a lone pair of electrons such that you get this molecule right here. And that is disphenoidal. It's also called seesaw and Really and truly, here's the seesaw. So on a flat surface, you should be able to see the seesaw shape back and forth, right? Okay, so that is disphenoidal or seesaw. And again, the reason the lone pair is on the central region where the trigonal planar structure is, is because within that region, you have bond angles of 120 as opposed to the 90 at the poles. So you never have the lone pairs at the poles on a trigonal bipyramidal basic domain structure. Okay, that was a cool video for you. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And of course, everybody likes Mickey Mouse. And uh, when you like Mickey Mouse, of course, you're going to want to be a chemist who likes Mickey Mouse. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Give me two thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time. Bye now.